In the last Med Mastery chapter, we learned about pressure waveforms for the right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary artery, and pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. Recognition of the waveforms is critical during PA catheter insertion. Once the catheter is inserted, we can use these waveforms to gather useful data. Two pressures can be transduced without moving the catheter, the CVP and the pulmonary artery pressure. With balloon inflation, we can measure the PCWP. In this lesson, we'll have the opportunity to practice. Let's see if you can identify the following waveforms from an ICU patient monitor. As I ask you questions, take a moment to pause the video and give yourself a chance to answer. Starting at the top, we see two green waveforms. What are these? Those should be familiar as ECG leads, showing us heart rate and rhythm. Just underneath is a red line. What shape does that waveform have? That's right, this is an arterial waveform coming from the patient's arterial line, measuring systemic blood pressure. Next, we see a yellow waveform. Can you decipher what that represents? If you said pulmonary arterial pressure, or PAP, you're right. This waveform is also an arterial waveform with the brisk systolic upstroke and a diacrotic notch representing the closure of the pulmonic valve. The scale can be set independently for each waveform on the monitor. So, even though the amplitude of the peripheral arterial line and the pulmonary artery tracing look similar, a close examination of the scale would show much lower pulmonary pressures compared to systemic in a healthy patient. Finally, a blue waveform is across the bottom of the screen. What does that represent? This is a venous waveform. Although it's a little noisy, it shows A and V waves, followed by the X and Y descents. This is the central venous pressure measurement. This waveform comes from a side port of the PA catheter, which is at the level of the right atrium. Let's see what this actually looks like on a patient monitor. Each channel is labeled for easy reference. You will also notice automated computer measurements of arterial and venous pressures. These measurements are useful at a glance, but remember, all pressure measurements are sensitive to gravity and positional changes, so it is crucial to level and zero the system each time measurements are obtained in order to be accurate. Let's practice obtaining the very important wedge pressure. Watch as the balloon inflates and we see the PA waveform transform into a venous waveform. Notice the overall pressure is lower and the waveform is exactly as we expect for venous and is not over damped or flattened. Now the monitor will measure a wedge pressure for you, but we want to ensure it is accurate and not measuring artifact. What is the correct timing in the respiratory cycle to measure the PCWP or any pressure? That's right, end expiration. And remember, the expiratory pressures will be higher than the inspiratory pressures. Now we have identified the wedge tracing at end expiration, but we have several ways to decipher. We use PCWP as a surrogate for left atrial pressure, so we're interested in the A wave. You can use a cursor on the monitor to find the middle of the A wave, and this is the pressure you want. In this example, the middle of the A wave corresponds to 7 millimeters of mercury, which is in the normal range. In some cases, the wedge pressure is difficult to obtain based on the position of the PA catheter or technical difficulties. In those cases, the PA diastolic pressure can be used as an approximation of wedge pressure. This is most likely to occur if it's difficult to obtain based on the position of the PA catheter or balloon. The measurements I find most useful from the PA catheter and routinely use in patient management are CVP, PA diastolic or PCWP, and the cardiac output, which you learned how to measure in Chapter 1. In the next Med Mastery lesson, we'll learn how to take these measured values and calculate other important hemodynamics to help with patient management. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.